is here back to the MPP. And lawyer, ambassador, Nia Ikweo to Ghana's uh, former Attorney General Ambassador to Canada. Uh, he's back in the fold of the NPP. He went on the side of Alan Tremanti when he was looking for the flag wearer. And they had a, a pull and push about who had a manifesto fair. I conducted that in, uh, interview in 2016. Uh, we're just some 30, uh, seven days to the election. Some issues that have always come up during elections. The question of spoiled or rejected ballots, what impact is had. Somebody made a joke the other time and said that if you put all the minority parties together and the votes they garner, spoiled ballots and rejected ballots would have made more than them. And then you ask yourself, why are we still recording spoiled or rejected ballots? Over the years since we started this journey in 1992, the days of opaque ballot boxes, days of black and white water register and ID cards without photos to the days when we had photos now to the biometric days and the days when you have a digitalized way of verifying whether you are on the register or not why do we still record spoiled and rejected ballots Balebin Zanyaku is with Ian Analytics he joins us here yesterday he gave us some interesting dynamics about swing region Central and the Greater Accra region were top on the agenda. There are four consti- four regions that will never swing, no matter what you do, in terms of the presidential elections. Yeah. Now let's get into this whole sport and rejected ballot analysis. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Okay, what's on the plate today? Yeah, today we are looking at uh, turnouts. Mm. As they are linked to the rejected ballot right, as well. So right. turn out registered voter analysis. Right. We want to really look at the regis- registration dynamics right. in the country right. and be able to dissect uh, the regional balance and distribution in, in, in voter registration as right. well. Mm. Yes. So let's begin. Let's start from 1992, at least for the Fourth Republican dispensation. Um, what was it like? Tell us the story. Okay, so in... 1992, mm-hmm. our registered we voter FDF population was 8.23 million. Okay, 8.23 million. That is what we started with. Right. Okay. And then we moved to 9.28 mm-hmm. in 96, mm-hmm. 10.7 in 2000, okay. and all the way to 2020, where we reached 17.03 million. Right. Okay. Now, if you look at our dynamics of the voter registered voters mm. nationally mm-hmm. in 20 in 2004 mm-hmm. actually the registered voters that we had was lower than the year 2000 okay okay and the reason is this anytime there is a, a regist- a national registration exercise mm-hmm you realize that we try to prune the database. Right. And that tends to correct mm-hmm. death and other related issues. Right. Sometimes uh, I've heard people, for example, I have heard people say that, okay, Ghana's voter, reg- voter is, is over bloated right. over the period. The politicians have said that over and over exactly. again. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Depending on where they are. Exactly. Whether they are in opposition or in power. Exactly. I mean, it, their claim doesn't support the data and the facts. Okay. Okay. You realize that if we start from 8.23 million. Right, that is 1992. And we have an average growth of about 2.65 or 2.7%. Mm-hmm. If you average that growth rate by 2020, mm-hmm. you come to around a 17. Point uh, there's around the 17 million that we are talking about. Right. But then there's also the argument that, yes, you may be growing uh, gradually, you may be averaging the growth, but there are also people who are not interested in the electoral process. FM, they, 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 they can't be bothered, especially when they have other means of identifying themselves, like the Ghana card or, you know, a passport or something. They, why would they bother to go and get a voter ID card? And, and some people have argued that. What, what do you say to that? My... My proposition is this. FM 92.7. Sometimes you hear civil, uh, 
uh, society organization mm-hmm. saying that okay once the ghana card is in mm-hmm. we don't need to re-register right and get a new voter reg- you can just use your your ghana card mm-hmm. and go and register mm-hmm. okay what that means mm-hmm. is that ghana does not have a means of pruning its voter register or they are not interlinked mm. with let's say birth and death registry and other related organization that can automatically mm-hmm. prune the, uh, the, the the voter register what mm. happens is that you are going to have a situation whereby we will not remove that that uh, people from the voter register mm. even though we'll be using our voter register for voter ca- uh, the national card for uh, for for voting right it's going to have an impact on the turnout. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if you look at our national turnout, mm-hmm. it comes down, we, are, we do around mm-hmm. 79 to 80 percent mm-hmm. in years that we do national voter registration. Right. So, for example, uh, in the year 2004, mm-hmm. where we did our first major uh, voter registration, uh, uh, national voter registration right the turnout was 85.1 percent mm. the f- next four years because we didn't do that one we mm. moved to 69 percent right and then 2012 we did another major one and mm. then we moved to 79.5 percent right 2020 we did another major one we had turnout of 79.5 percent mm. so you can see the pattern mm-hmm. if you do a national voter registration, mm-hmm. your turnout hovers around 79.5%. Mm. If you don't do it, within just four-year period, turnout reduces around 69%. Uh, percent. Mm. So, assuming we are not doing any national uh, voter exercise, right. what is going to happen is that by 12 years, 20 mm. years, mm. Turnout will be around uh, below 50% because mm-hmm. the register would have been so much bloated mm-hmm. that we have not removed, we've not been able to remove dead people from the register mm. and all other related issues. Right. So h- having the ca- Ghana card is very important, mm. but I believe that occasionally mm. we still have to do uh, a national voter uh, uh, registration exercise because we've not developed yet to the level mm-hmm. where we can just link our voter database to mm-hmm. other uh, national system like the birth and death registry mm-hmm. to automatically prune the system. Right. Yes. Now, now, if you look at the that those who also say that, look, I'm going to register, not necessarily because I want to vote, but because I need a, the voter ID card to transact my business or to also know that, okay, I'm, I'm on the... On the on the register, you have those people also captured within your data, right? Yeah. So, for example, you compare the national uh, voter population mm-hmm. to the World Bank estimates right. of our population growth. Right. So, from the year uh, 1992, mm-hmm. the World Bank estimate for our uh, population growth right. is around 2.5 percent, mm-hmm. 2.5, 2.6 percent. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so. Our voter register growth rate is around 2.7%. Right. So they are just in tandem. Mm. They are just close to uh, around the same point. Mm. Now, the difference of our 1% is when you factor in uh, what we call a teenage uh, mortality. Right. There are some people who are born at birth, but by the time they reach 18, mm. they are gone. They are gone. Right. So if you factor in those adjustments, mm-hmm. you realize that our voter population growth Mm -hmm. and our population as a country right i mean there isn't that much uh room let's say uh of for greater concern Mm. that our uh, voter population is over over over, over bloated or something what would you say have been the contributions of the various political parties especially the major ones ndc and pp in trying to maintain the steady growth that you spoke about averagely uh each election cycle to so the growth of our, our, our registers we have it now 17 point something million 
Yeah, but I, I think for them, mm. I mean, the co political atmosphere in Ghana is very uh, vibrant when mm -hmm. it comes to registration because people know that if you can register your your core members right i mean you have the ability to uh, make some inroads when mm -hmm. election day comes mm -hmm. so i mean the various political parties i mean even recently you have mm -hmm. the ndc mm -hmm. i mean trying to ensure that the voter register even the minutest things mm -hmm. are corrected so mm -hmm. i think the political parties have really taken a very keen interest mm -hmm. in trying to ensure that and also working in tandem with the EC. Uh, I mean, we shouldn't always take their suggestions as being antagonistic. Right. But we should see it as a way of their contribution mm -hmm. in ensuring that the voter register that we have, it is perfect, if you not 100% uh, uh, accurate, mm -hmm. but it's near perfect. And I think... Uh, we, we, we have these numbers, and everybody, I'm sure that people around Africa and elsewhere will say, oh, well, that, that democracy is growing, it's good. But then you go to the polls and you see that there are a lot of rejected ballots and sport ballots. And somebody said, if you put those votes together, it's bigger, it's larger than the votes of CPP, PNC, PPP, uh, GFP, um, IPP. If you put all of them together, it's bigger than all their votes. Yeah. Why? No, technically, uh, if you look at the rejected ballot analysis, mm -hmm. okay, we, we will delve in that one deeper next week. Right. But I just want to make a, te a, a teaser. Yes, mm. I just want to make a general uh, comment about rejected ballot. Right. They are mostly, if you move to the cities, mm -hmm. you realize that rejected ballot reduces drastically. Mm. Would you attribute that to literacy? Yes. Mm. It's, 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 the, it's one of the key components. Right. But as you move further away from the cities and the mm -hmm. cosmo cosmopolitan area, mm -hmm. you see an increasing trend of higher rate of rejected ballot. And I think that is something that we have to look at. Mm -hmm. So next week, uh, we will focus more on that area. Right. But today, I want to finish with the voter population and analysis and mm -hmm. the turnout. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you look at the rate of growth, what I've given you is are the real numbers, right. the nominal numbers. Right. Now let's look at growth rate. Mm -hmm. In 1996, our population, the voter growth rate was 12.8. Okay. Now if you look at 2015.3, mm. now in, 20, in 2004, because we did a major exercise, that is the only period mm -hmm. where the growth rate was negative. Okay. 2004. Right. Because what it, what it means is that because... That, that was when we reintroduced, we brought in the pictures and... and everything. Right. And then we did a major voter registration exercise. Right. So we took away the opaque ballot boxes. We brought in the black and white pictures. You had a barcode introduced in 2004. Exactly. Right. And that shrunk or removed all the errors and dead people mm. since 1992. Uh, right. So we see that 2004 was the first major step in trying to have a very clean voter register. Okay. And that is why you see a dip. Mm. It reduced by about 3.2%. Right. And then because we've now pruned it, 2008, the growth was 20.5%. Uh, 20, 20 mm. And then since then, the growth rate has been reducing marginally. Okay. Uh, 2012, 13.5. Mm. 2016, 11. And then 2020, mm -hmm. we are at 8% uh, growth rate. I see. Let's look at the, the numbers. They look beautiful. Yeah. But the turnout. Mm -hmm. In 1992, we had just left, or we were just defrosting from uh, a pro-military you know, era, we're now coming to a fresh democracy. We had, you say we had 8.2 yes. million people who had registered to say we want to be part of the democratic process. What what portion of that 8.2 turned out to vote? Yeah, so if you go to... Uh, okay, just give me a minute. Right. We're doing an yes. analysis. Mm, okay. Right, go ahead. So in 1992... You remember the MPP 
Technically, mm. I mean, because the of boycotted the boycotted elections. Yes. Right. So, 1992... And, and just to place a record that in 1992, the elections were held at, at different points. Exactly. So, the parliamentary elections were held separately from the presidential elections. Exactly. Not what we have now. Exactly. Right. Okay. So, in 1992, that is where we had our lowest turnout nationally. Mm. That was 50.2%. Okay. So, almost half the registered voters didn't turn up uh, mm. to vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. 1996, we had 77.8 mm -hmm. turnout. 2061.7%. Right. 204.85.1. Mm. 2008, 69.5. 2012, 79.5. Mm -hmm. 2016, 69.3. And mm. 2020, 79.5. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk briefly about turnout mm -hmm. okay so as i've already uh, uh said right when we do national voter uh, uh mm -hmm. exercises mm -hmm. our turnout reduces <coughs> our turnout increases mm -hmm. okay so in the year 2004 2012 2020 mm -hmm. you see that our turnout are 85 79 79 right now mm -hmm. In the non-voter registration years, mm -hmm. so you have 2000 at 61%, right. 2008, 69%, mm -hmm. 2016, 69%. Mm -hmm. So in non-voter registration years, right. the turnout reduces. Mm -hmm. And the turnout, Three, I mean, there are two regions that uh, have a bit of uh, different, uh, interesting characteristics. You mean Volta and Ashanti? Yes. Mm. For, what, for the sake of the NPP and for the sake of the NDC. Yes. In the Volta and the Ashanti. Historically, mm -hmm. Ashanti region has the highest average turnout rate. Wow. Of 75.2%. That's big. Yes. Mm. For them, it doesn't matter who is in power. We will come and vote. They will come. They will show up mm. and, come and come and vote. Right. So if you look at Ashanti... 96, apart from the 92, which they did the 50.5, which mm. they make the national uh, voter uh, Average. turnout. Mm. 96, they did 80. 2000, that is where they had their lowest, that was 65. Mm -hmm. 204, 88. Mm -hmm. 2008, 73. 2012, 84. Mm -hmm. 2016, 75. 2020, 82. I'm surprised that the figures for 2000, because in 2000, there was a clarion call for uh, a change in government. People yes. thought that we had seen enough of uh, former President Rawlings, President Kufo yes. had come in as a gentle giant, and yes. people thought that, well, so why would his home region and the stronghold of the party that won the elections eventually have a low turnout in 2000? No, so 2000 was, if you look at it, as I said, mm -hmm. Interpret this. In fact, the 65 is relatively even higher. Okay. Because we did at that time when we did the registration in uh, 92. Mm -hmm. By the year 2000, the voter population, as I told you, I mean because of dead people and other things, right. it has bloated up. Right. So that was the need to do the claim in 204. Okay. So. Averagely in 2000, there was because the, the, the voter population was so high, right? Yes, it, it's brought down the average. Mm. Uh, yes, that, that, that is what happened. I see. So, for Ashanti, they mm. turn out every, every come rain or shine, yes. they, are, they will be there. Yeah. Yeah. What about the voter region? The voter region is not like that, mm. okay. And the interesting fact is that they tend to have very low turnout. Mm -hmm. At the eight, at the end of the eight-year period of NDC's rule. Okay. Okay, and mm. it's an interesting. When, when they see, for example, and, and and it's interesting you brought this up. Yes. Because some people suggest that okay, everybody will have their eight years, and after their eight years is done, you know, power will switch. So maybe the people in the voter region take a cue from that to say, okay, we have had our eight. Uh, why are we going out to vote? Let them come and continue. Oh. No, what, what, what I understand the data to mean is that, because if you look at, at the, during MPP periods, their turnout are relatively higher. But at the end of the eight-year period mm. of the party they support, right. their turnout drop. Why? And it's technically because I think they feel frustrated. Okay. 
Okay, they see themselves as the backbone of the NDC. Mm -hmm. And when they help the NDC come to power, they mm. believe that, I mean, more is expected from that particular party mm. in terms of development in that particular region. Mm -hmm. So when they come, I mean, the first year, they, I mean, the turnout is high. But by the time the eight-year cycle ends, mm. you realize that, they realize that, I mean, they have nothing to show forth. Right. So what they do is that they are not going to vote for the MPP. Right. They will just sit out. They, they are not coming. They are not coming to participate in it at all exactly. because they, they feel that they are, their party will not win. Not that will not or, win, or but... Or is done with their eight years. Yes. And, and possibly they are checking out. Yes, and they didn't, uh, no matter who is coming, they didn't really uh, benefit that much mm. from their own, let's say, their own government, mm. people that they really support. Mm. And that is what, for example, in 2016, when NDC lost, I mean, their turnover was just 60.7%. I see. Did, did you also pay attention to the age demographics of the people who vote, who, uh, who go and register and those who turn out to vote? And no. So those ones are technically with, uh, it's an EC. Right. Uh, EC has that data. data right. But what we have, which uh, some we will look at next week, is we have some age demographics and gender demographics right. on the parliamentary aspirants. Okay. So we can do some analysis we, we look, look and look at, at their that. age distribution mm -hmm. and then look at gender, all those related issues uh, right. next week when we take a critical look right. and uh, in-depth analysis of the parliamentary. R rural Ghana has an interesting, you know, dynamics altogether. There are farmers, there are fisher folks, there are people who are doing artisanal works, etc. Some prefer to go and vote early in the morning before they go to their work or some want to go and finish what they want to do and come back did you also capture that in 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 your in your analysis no so in the terms uh, of the turnout no so sometimes you look at it in terms of let's say regional distribution right okay so within a constituency you might still have uh diversities mm. okay so for example you look at uh at the regional level, mm. that is what uh, we are looking at, the aggregated uh, uh, values. Mm. So maybe we can, uh, next week when I can, we can have a look at maybe specific uh, constituencies mm. where, I mean, you, you're having a voter population that are mostly farmers. Right. And there may be fisher folks. And then we, we can look at that aspect mm. and then look at them, how, let's say, the fisher folks, how they their turnout and block. Right. And then we we'll look at also farming constituents and communities. How they turn out uh, and how block. They, they turn out you, and you spoke about four of uh, regions that will never swing when it comes to the presidential yeah. elections. Volta, yeah. Eastin, uh, Upper West. Upper East. Upper East, sorry. Yes. And Oti. Or the two region. What, what is the turnout in those regions? I'm curious to learn. We've spoken about the Volta region already. Okay. But let's go to the Eastern region, Upper East, and then Oti region. Okay. Mm. Before I go there, let me make one interesting fact about Greater Accra turnout. Mm. What happens is that if Greater Accra, if their turnout drops, mm -hmm. the party in government is losing. Mm. Okay. Say, say that again. If the turnout mm -hmm. in Greater Accra drops, right. what it means is that the Party, the incumbent party is losing. Is 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 losing that election. Why, why must they suffer that? If if, <laughs> if people decide to, to <laughs> and then if people decide not to turn up, why must the government in power be? No, some way somehow. For example, you look at two thousand. Mm. Their turnout was fifty nine point five. Right. And then the NDC was kicked out. 2008, they had one of the lowest turnout, 67.1. Mm. Uh, I mean, MPP was kicked out. Right. In 2016, they had, whilst uh, we were doing about 70% mm. on average, mm. they were doing 65.6. Right. And then the incumbent uh, government was kicked out. Mm. So Greater Accra seems to uh, also have this tendency that... More if, like the kingmaker. Yes. If people yes. don't turn up yes. and you are the incumbent, yes. you know that your days are numbered. Yes. Mm. And I think they may mirror something similar to... It's like those who may turn out might be maybe the the supporters of the opposition party mm. okay and then the government party so 
the swing regions and maybe voter. Mm -hmm. I think politicians should take a look at those two mm -hmm. regions, mm -hmm. Central, Greater Accra, Volta. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are part of Greater Accra. I mean, currently have the largest voter population. Right. Okay. So if you are a government in power and you can secure, let's say, 53% of that constituent of that region, mm -hmm. it means that you have to pay a particular attention to that region. Let's talk about the four swing yes. and, and the turnouts in those regions. So let's look at. First, let's look at... Uh, We've taken a look at Volta already. Okay, so let's look at Upper East. Upper East, right. Okay. Mm. So Upper East... Let me make a general observation about those northern region, right. regions. Mm. Okay. The turnout in the five northern regions... Five regions of the north. Yes. Mm. Since 2016, right. I mean, has skyrocketed. Whoa. Why Say, is that? Since Baumia became vice president and John Mahama, mm. and it became clear that these two pillars from the north right. are going to be in contest. One of them will be. Exactly. Okay. And you can see that, for example, 2020, turnout in Napa is about 82%. Wow. Beating the national average. So all of them, when you go to Samana, it was 80%. When you go to Upper West, 82%. Mm. When you go to uh, Northeast. Northeast, yeah. 82.3. Northern region. Yes, northern upper region. East, upper west. So now that since 2016, when it became apparent mm. that these two pillars, the two sons of the north, exactly, mm. are going to be, I mean, currently that is the epicenter of, of the political activity. Mm. There is a lot of engagement. I mean, turnout has uh, increased mm. in that region. It's safe to say home support. Exactly. All right. And everybody, currently you see all the John Mahama, uh, but they are almost always there. Right. They want to prove that, I mean, they, 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 they can capture those particular regions. Right. And so that, that is what you see. Mm. So Upper East, they are, uh, I think we've talked about, you asked about Upper East. Right. So Upper East, mm -hmm. averagely, they have done about 70% on average. It was only in 2020 that they did 82. Mm -hmm. That is what I said. Uh, so when it comes to OT, mm -hmm. the, in the OT region, OT region also, their turnout has historically not been mm -hmm. that much, except in 2020 mm -hmm. and in 2004. So, averagely, they've been doing around also 70. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 2008, they did uh, 67. Mm -hmm. uh, 2012, they did 76. Mm -hmm. So, this these are uh, how the turnout uh, look like in mm -hmm. those four regions that there are no swing uh, constituencies. I, I just right. wanted to ask a, qu a quick one on mm -hmm. OT. So in 2020, what did their numbers look like? 83.6. They did. I don't know if... I, I have a sense that when they got the... maybe the new region. Okay. Okay. That is probably one of the reasons I could attribute that one to. Mm. And mm. you see that the NPP did increase their support significantly mm. in that region. So I think mm. when uh, they had the region as a, uh, they were, became autonomous mm. right. as, as a region, I think uh, maybe they, they compensated the mm. government uh, and then so you could see turnout uh, moving average from 70% uh, to around 80 uh, 3.6 mm. in 2020. Mm. I see. Then let's talk now about the Eastern region. The yes. Eastern region holds a place of pride in the life of the MPP, yes. right? Yes. What does the voter turnout like in the Eastern region? Eastern region, we are having 2,063.9, uh, 2,864, 2012, 60, 81, mm -hmm. 2016, 68, and then 2020, uh, 77. 77. Yeah, in 2020, in the last election, they did 77.1%. Mm -hmm. So you realize that, I mean, they are not far off from the national average. Right. Even though 2020, the national average was 70, 79.5. Mm -hmm. They did just a little bit below right. the national average. And maybe... Uh, they may have the same characteristics that voter mm. who says maybe probably the current mm. president comes from their region, so maybe they're expecting more. Mm. So the turnout was a little bit lower than the national average, but mm. hey, I mean, they, 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 they held their own. What is their average in the eastern region? I mean, you are looking at, you are looking at about 73.2. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uti region. 
OT. Mm -hmm. yeah. OT is one of the regions that does not swing in terms of the presidential decision. Yeah. Right. W what's their turnout like? So, OT region, 2020, they did 83.6. 83. Because yeah. that was the first time the region was exactly. capped. So, exactly. Wow, that, but that's high. Yeah, exactly. 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 Wow. They came out in their numbers exactly. to vote. Exactly. Exactly. Whoa. Interesting. The, the turnout... Um, I, I don't know if you consider the times that people turned out to vote. Um, maybe you looked at that, maybe you didn't, but I would be interested. Polls open at 7, yeah. they close by 5. What times do people turn out the most? No, in fact, we, we, we've not, You've fact, not yes, focused uh -huh. on, on that. Yeah. It would have been interesting to know because the Electoral Commission, I remember the last time was considering closing polls by 3 p.m. or so, or maybe earlier 4 p.m., so that counting can go on, but it's it's interesting. Unless there's something else you want to add, we want to wrap up the segment nicely. You always have something. This thing you told me about the voter region, and they not turning up in their numbers to vote when their party that they support is done with their eight eight years is is a striking one indeed. Yes, yes, yes. That 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 is it. And I think the NDC should take a particular look at voter region the next time they come into to power. power because. The region feels that it has supported the party so right. much right. over the years yep, that yeah. it has to it has to get something to show for, mm. and the cycle of not developing that region, right. by particularly by the NDC, I mean sometimes hurts their fortunes. And you say that if you are an incumbent party, and you see voter turnout low in the Greater Accra region. It means you are you are going. It means that your days are numbered. Exactly, <laughs> Helen. You don't want to be in such a position, do you? Oh, not at all. <laughs> the, the very very interesting insights, especially mm. um, as far as the average voter turnouts in some of the key regions are concerned. But yes, mm. I think uh, all the. Uh, parties and um, all the hopefuls, presidential mm. and parliamentary mm -hmm. hopefuls, uh, they'll be tuning in to listen to mm. Mr. Nyako. I think uh, the mm. clues are in the data. If you want to know how the elections will turn out this year, Mr. Nyako, is it safe to say that if you examine the numbers, it will give you pretty much uh, an idea of where we could mm. be heading to? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, clearly, I mean, there are, there are signposts within the data set. Right. Mm. And then uh, it, it tells you where we are likely to head. Mm. Okay. So we will do more analysis coming. More analysis week. coming next week. And next week, you say we are looking at... Uh, the parliamentary data. Parliamentary data in terms of the demographics, etc. Exactly. We'll be drilling down yes. how many women there are, how many men yeah. there are, what the yeah. age yeah. differentials are. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we have a very youthful parliament or an aging parliament. Exactly. You know, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. But a quick one before you go. This new register that we have with 17 million in excess of, of the number, do we have more young people, more old people? No, no. So the data that I have is up to 2020. Okay. We have not had the detailed... For, for this year? Yeah, for okay, this but year. But as of 2020, yes. what do we have? What yes. do we know? Are we a youthful country? Are we an aging country, middle age? Are we in the area pension? No, I think technically we say that like, I mean, the, we call something a hump. Right. The graph of our voting demographic is like a hump. Right. So it is concentrated within the age bracket of right. around 25 to 45. Right. That is where you have the, 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 the hump mm. of, 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 of the graph. And they take the decision. Yes. Hey. Okay. Ms. Zanyako, I thank you very much. Ibn Zanyako is with the EN Analytics uh, Company Limited and he is joining us uh, from now till when we vote and after that to do some real data anal analysis. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Yeah. We'll see you on Monday. Yes. Are you yeah, joining us tomorrow for the bus ride? It'll be nice. It'll be free <laughs> cocoa and cozy and everything. It'll be Helen's first time on the trotro. Yeah. Our bus is not a trotro. Is what? It's a really it's decked out, same, air conditioned. It's the same wule 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 wule. Just me, I'm just happy. It's. Minu yano yadamazipa.